Hey everybody, today we are going to build a new computer. We are going to put the MSI D270 Gaming M7, and we're going to put that with the... Well, it's here somewhere, I swear. Oh Jesus, I lost it. Oh, here it is. This is the i7 7700K processor. The K being, of course, unlocked so you can overclock it. We're hoping to get at least 5 gigahertz on it. Hopefully 5.2. We'll see what happens. We're going to pair that with the uh, 960 EVO SSD NVMe. It's the 500 gigahertz version. It's a little more than what we need, but we need it. It's precious. So we're going to pair that with some Vengeance LPX DDR4. This is 3000 speed. Uh, so we're going to throw that in there. See what she does. It's uh, 16 gig gigabits, ginger bits, ginger bytes, ginger bytes. Uh, we're going to go with the uh, couple of hard drives for storage. It's going to be one terabyte each, and the 980 Ti by EVGA. Uh, I've had this card for about two years. It's been my go-to thing. Uh, this is all strictly for uh, gaming and VR purposes. I really wanted to put it together an uh, AMD uh, Ryzen board. We're gonna get that later, probably next year, um, or maybe later if I get rich or something. They have two, why not? That'd be great. Um, but this is a board I picked out the MSI M7 strictly because as you can see it's printed VR everywhere. It's supposed to have VR specific uh, USB 3.1 ports. Uh, I don't know what really makes it VR specific. It's uh, what they say is it reduces all the processes in the background uh, for VR. That senses it and you just shut them all off and it makes it lightning fast. We're gonna find out. We're gonna start throwing it together and see what we get. The first thing you want to do, I already started, was we're going to put the for cooling, we're going with the H100i. This is a closed loop cooler, meaning you cannot add any coolant to it. Uh, they usually have a lifespan of about three to five years. Um, I've had that for about a year now and it's great still. This is the second build I'm putting it on obviously. Uh, so what you want to do is first of all put on the back plate here. That will keep it on lockdown. Always remember when dealing with computers you want to just jam things in there and uh, you can go ahead and strip out things. It really doesn't matter. Uh, smash the board around. They're not fragile at all. So there you go. Now what you want to do is toss her in there. I already put the stands in as you can see this is where your motherboard is going to sit and be comfortable I already put the back plate in always put that in first before you put it on your motherboard otherwise you're going to take everything back off unscrew everything you're going to hate your life and your dad will probably not love you and not respect you then what you do is you place the screw in and you want to turn it clockwise in a clockwise fashion because lefty loosey righty tighty coarse Duh. Also, uh, it's important to note when you are putting these screws in, there's uh, you get about one, two, three, six, nine of them or so, and you want to put them in uh, in a pentagram fashion. Uh, to, well, possibly, possibly a cross fashion. It all depends on your religion and what you're leaning towards. And obviously, you don't want to smash these in all the way. In the world of computers, less is more. Unless you're talking about like ginger bites. Then more is more. And less makes you less of a man. Some people don't put all the screws in. Those people are jerks. Sometimes I don't. When you drop screws, you can just brush those aside. You don't need those screws. Typically every project that I build, um, I have extra screws. Whether it be building a house or a computer, cars. Uh, it's a form of weight reduction. It keeps you know better gas mileage, uh, makes it more aerodynamic sometimes, sometimes less. Sometimes you need more drag though. Uh, what you want to do, um, processes are kind of like 9 volt batteries. You want to lick them, make sure it has a good charge. This one does. Now they have this weird little clip gadget that AMD has never had because I believe these are called floating processors. Now there's no actual pin, as you can see, that pins in, um, it floats on top, and what this is going to do is compress it in there, and what you want to do is find the golden arrow, much like the golden ticket, 
you can see it's right here. And there will be a golden arrow, um, or another arrow rather, on here, telling you where that golden arrow goes. Right there, see I'm not lying, it's there. You match them. It's, it, all computer is a, a game of matching things. So, pop that in there. Center it. Like matching a neck beard with a waifu pillow. <laughs> you gotta find just the right one. That's right. So basically, then you put this down here. And there's a little screw that this goes under, like so. And this lever, if I do it correctly, is gonna force this plastic bit to push down the processor and it's gonna pop off like a spring-loaded trap of some sort. Think of uh, Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd. It's a little rough. You get a little scared sometimes. It's like, oh god, I'm gonna break it. $300 process, I'm gonna break it. Oh, you won't break it. It's meant to be like that. And that's that. It came right off. This is, uh, like I said, 500 ginger bits of hard drive space. This is a NVMe SSD by Samsung. What you want to do is pop this sucker off. A little screw in here. Um, one weird thing about MSI, uh, they have a heat shield on their uh, M2 here. And a lot of people don't like it because they say it actually works as a, a blanket. You see it's, like a, it's supposed to be a heat dissipator on there. And some people say that it actually keeps this, uh, it warms up this drive instead of cools it down. But, I mean, who am I? Who am I to say? What you want to do is you get your little drive here, you get your set screw here, and uh, in my case it was in the middle, so I just backed it off and put it in the very back. Then, as you can see, that's where it is now. You want to pop your uh, hard drive right back in there. That works. And you want to put this on top if you want. Some people leave it off, like I said. Um, we're going to put it on, just see what happens. This is shiny, and I actually like shiny things. So sue me. Push it down, push it forward. Dunzo. Then you get your little screw that came out of the top. Place that down top. And then you get your screwdriver. What this tool does is actually use the driving screws. Um, let's move on to the wham. This is RAM, random access memory. It's used as random access memory, believe it or not. Every motherboard has their own little special way of, uh, this is a dual channel, and you have to put it in right that is correct. And in this motherboard, it is in channel two and four. Uh, if you put them in the wrong ones, sometimes it won't activate uh, the stuff that makes it go better and um, one thing about computers is when you put stuff in it you want to make it go you want to make it go as fast as possible and more better uh, less worse at all times so make sure you line it up you really can't go wrong with this there's essentially two different ways to put it I believe on this one this way is a little bit longer than this way and you just want to jam it in there if you have it in backwards just continue jamming until you hear a snap. Push down like that, snaps into place. Same thing, just push firmly on both sides. Snap, snap, done. This is the EVGA 850G. Um, they were nice enough to... So that's what happens when you turn your phone off for uh, several days and have uh, right you do is uh, that's my text alert. So got a whole lot of text from the last couple days. So power supply, EVGA 850G. Um, I went ahead and bought white cabling to go with it because I think it's going to look pretty cool in a white and black environment. Um, this is a modular. Modular meaning there's nothing on the back. It's completely flush. You can pick all the cables you want. You plug them in the back. Uh, between modular and semi-modular, it does not really matter. Um, you're always going to have a cable going from here to your motherboard, um, obviously to uh, your different drives, your hard drives and such. Um, 
except for your M2 that does not need any cables that plugs straight into the board as you can see so this keeps things really nice and neat so if you ever got like a one or two terabyte drive you really wouldn't need a whole lot of cables and it would look clean some girls dig the clean look I personally like a little dirty pop her into place and our four screws the one back these are actually a lot bigger than uh, the old ones I have I just have little tiny ones but these are bulky and nice you gotta do it like lug, lug nuts on a car. Yep. Just that you want to go a uh, cross pattern. Otherwise, uh, when you're driving your computer at around 50 miles per hour, could uh, the power supply go flying off? You don't want that. Safety first, kids. This hole is apparently a foothold. Not because it's super tight, it's just being a dirt. But I can see how you meant, you know, you take that as meaning, oh, it's a butthole because it's tight. <sighs> there we go. She's snug. Snug as all Hades. All right. Now, where do we go from here, kids? Let's, uh, let's throw the, let's throw the, uh, the cooler on. Now for the cooler, uh, I already put the, uh, this right here, this little clippity clip that comes from Corsair. I believe it comes with this one already on it. This particular one is for Intel. There's another one that looks just like this. It actually looks a lot like this. Um, this is for AMD. I'm not sure. I think Ryzen might have a different pattern, maybe slightly different. Not really sure. We'll have to get back to on that. You do it the cords left or right, I suppose. I, I'm gonna go that way. I like it. I think it looks a little cleaner. We already talked about clean. Cleanliness is valueless. All right, so since we're gonna do that, we're gonna throw these screws in and throw the fans on. We use two Nakua fans. These are NF F12s. They are designed for uh, pushing through. Uh, restricted environments like a radiator and whatnot. That's exactly what we're doing, so it's a no-brainer. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have air pulled in to the front, and we're gonna have air pushed out to the top of the radiator. Um, it really doesn't matter so much. Um, the whole push-pull method, there's about a thousand videos about it. Um, that's a GoPro. So there's about 100 videos about what the best method is. Um, it turns out there really isn't a whole lot of difference. We're talking one to two degrees. Of course, when you're overclocking a whole lot, that can kind of matter, but it really, for general purposes, it does not matter. So we're gonna have it pull in air, push all that nice cool air through the top. Uh, we're gonna have Noctua fans. These are NF F12 fans. They're gonna be helping scoot the air across. Uh, the radiator is going to be top mounted. I'd like to put it, I would rather have it front mounted, but this case doesn't really allow so much for that. So we're going to top mount it, make it easy peasy for us. Well, I always recommend just kind of get them hand tight. That way you got a little wiggle room because they get tight and throw the other fans on. You never want to tighten things up until the very end. Just like carpentry, you know? It's the same way. Or working on cars. You just, you tighten something up and you're screwing yourself. It's a guarantee. As soon as you tighten up, you forgot something else. Bad luck. At least in my experience. What about your experience? Yeah, except then you forget to tighten it up and then you're like, you're driving <laughs> and you're like, shit, did I tighten that? And you gotta like pull over and check and it. And then your wheel flies off. Again. Yeah. You hear a strange knocking while you're going down. I'm like, what is that strange knocking sound? It seems like it's coming from my wheel. Right. Is that is it that lug nut I forgot to tighten? And then it's not. It's a hook from the guy. From the scary story about the hook with the guy in the car. 
Remember? The screeching. Yeah. yeah. That's a story. The nice thing about Nectula fans, as you can see, besides the ugly color, which is awesome, they have little rubber guys on them. I believe they're called rubber feetsies. And uh, they're anti-vibration pads, um, being that they're rubber, so if anything vibrates on it, the rubber will dull it down. And so we get nice, no sound. No sound's good sound sometimes. Like when you get home from work and the woman starts complaining at you. And you're just like, baby, rubber feet. Bay, bay, bay. I bet if I did that loud enough, she'd respond. Bay. Bay. Yeah. I tried to act like I had a real life girlfriend. Yeah. It's all white blues for me. They'll probably fall for it. Y'all know. Alright. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to manage that. That's good. That's fine. Alright. So there's a little um, CPU fan pump guys like this and whatnot. You want to plug those in the right spot. This one says pump on the top and the bottom one says CPU fan um, I believe in this this is even though it is a pump it would still be considered the fan um, so that's what we're going to go with okay. the pump is more for uh, different water coolers Now we are on the part where you put cream on your processor. This is cream. We're going to use the Arctic MX4, it's a thermal compound. Uh, there's about 100 different ways to do it. There's another video online about how you should do it. Should you put it in your rice? Should you put it in the size of a pea? Do you make an X pattern? Do you make a spiral pattern? Do you cover the whole processor and then spatula it on there? Um, from all my understanding and all the tests I've seen done, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing that matters is if you do too much or too little. Uh, too much, especially if it's conductive, you can squeeze it too much and it'll leak onto your board. You cause a short, you don't want that because that sucks. Um, and you could also use a little too little, in which case uh, it won't cover the full processor and it would not have good contact. This is what, essentially how this works is this big piece of copper here has water running do it on both sides, it goes in and then out, up to this, gets pulled off, and that's what dissipates the heat that your processor gets from working real hard playing video games and streaming porn and you know whatever you're into. Um, and so all the thermal compound does is match this to that. And you don't want to use too much. Uh, they say uh, basically you want to aim for the size of the capacitor there. So you want about that size right in the center and then you squeeze this on top of it, as you'll see, and that's all you have to do. So, squeeze some out about the size of that capacitor. Oops, I'd say that's about it. And then you get your block here, and rotate it the way you'd like. I just want to snug them up. No need to uh, crush it and strip the food. Unless it's something, said something bad to your mama. And then squeeze the shit out of it. It's a mama board. It's true. Yeah, if it said something bad to your mama board, then by all means, beat the shit out of it. You son of a bitch. Fan cords go in fan cord spots. That's actually true. Yeah. Let's 
throw the G-Cat in. What do you got there? This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 980 Ti. The ACX 2.0 uh, super clocked. That just means it's got a little more horsepower into the engine. Um, great card. I've been using it for a lot for VR. Um, there's not a game it really can't play. Uh, I like it. Can't say enough good things about it. Um, I would take a 1080 Ti if one was gifted. Uh, you know, just to compare to see, you know. Um, I would immediately sell this card then. Uh, because, you know, compare. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a great card. Love it. I've had it for about, well, let's call it two seasons now. That's what video games call it now. You know that? You don't, yeah. like, yeah, it's like you get a season's pass, it's like a year's pass for free content. And then you put screws in, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. It almost looks like a computer, doesn't it? Almost. You know what I'm going to do with it? What? I'm going to use the compute things. Oh. Yeah, man. It's good for that. Straight up. Now all that's left is the Wired Up with these awesome EVGA white wires. Go ahead and smash that fucking like button. Subscribe too, you fuck. Alright, it's wired. Why not? Just fucking wire this shit. Uh, it's wired up, all you gotta do is jam things in. To and fro. At your leisure. Definitely wanna make the wires look pretty. That's the whole point of getting white wires. Make them look pretty. Make them look pretty. The box. Well, I have a question. Sure. Why does every motherboard have a panic button on it? I mean, in an emergency, it looks like that would be pretty like hard to access. You got to open your computer. Mm -hmm. Someone breaks in the house, you got to open the computer box and hit this red button in there. That deletes all the dick pics stored on your file. Oh, I see. It's actually pretty intuitive. These are for hard drives or different uh, thingy things like uh, hard drives or. CD um, ROMs, I believe they call them, or DVD ROMs, David ROMs, like to call. Yes, this is what we're looking for, indeed. This is for the the Sipu, the Sipu and the Pisu. It's the uh, wire for them. Now the correct way to route wires is to basically jam it through the computer box holes and just kind of finagle it. Hopefully you get somewhere. If you don't, just start over, do it again. I think by the time I'm finished editing all this, the new processor will come out. I'm just have to do it all over again. Yeah. You gotta edit in all the references people don't understand. Uh, when you say that's the idea, you gotta splice in a clip of <laughs> clip from the movie. Oh, you wanna be alone, don't you? That's the idea. I did not hit her, I did not hit her, I did not. <laughs> we should have just had that playing in the background the whole time. Yeah. The wires are important because that has all the electricity going from the box to the board. Inside the wires is like copper or various other metals and uh, they conduct electricity. And uh, that goes to the computer box all over the place. And if you think about it in terms of feng shui, it's positive energy flowing through the box of the computer. And then what it brings out is pornography and video games. And sometimes music, depending. Or a post remote. Okay, so now we're putting the uh, SATA cables in here. Uh, it just plugs straight into the board, fish them out through the back. I have three hard drives, so you'd need three cables. Easy peasy. You know you're getting close when you get to this point. We're not even going to plug these in yet. We're going to just kind of route them, get them back, get them ready, uh, and then. I, I like to boot up with just the main hard drive first. I think everything's good. Oh, 
scary. This is always this is always the scariest part because when it doesn't turn on, you guys start thinking about all things that could possibly have gone wrong, and I don't want to think about that at all. I just want things to work. Um, we're finished. Here we go with the first boot. I press the power button. Theoretically, it should light up, turn on. Uh, no pop sounds, no smoking, uh, just twirling and, and goodness. And that screen should light up and say a bunch of numbers and letters. Uh, and I'm kind of nervous, but hey, let's do it, you know? Let's just do it. So far, so good. So I think for the first run, we're simply going to make sure it boots, keep everything the same. Um, and then, well actually it won't boot because it doesn't have windows. Which is why we put the disc in right now. Let's uh, go to save and exit. Save changes and reboot. Theoretically, it should boot straight from the drive. And Windows will be like, hey, you want to install me, guy? And I'll be like, yeah. Game boost to set enable. Not recommend doing any modifications on the BIOS or the menu. Ah, shut up. That's pretty. Windows. That's what we want to see. It's just like I said, isn't it? I said we'd see that, and that's what we saw. Hey, look at that. That's good. Uh, yeah, we're in the we're in the Americas, right? Yeah. That's good. Just install it. Now I'm predicting the installation is gonna be very fast. And we got the code all popped in there, we're ready to go. Uh, we just gotta accept the terms and conditions. I actually read through every single line, uh, and the uh, EULA. Um, I believe that's the electronic user's license, license agreement. agreement, I believe. Uh, it's always important to read every single last note. Um, it could take you several days to do it, but I always highly recommend It's an exciting read. Uh, once you get to the bottom part, they really tell you about how they're stealing your soul and can actually legally come to your house and jam anything they want into your ass. And there you have it. It is all up and running. Mild overclock to 5.0, which was extremely easy. Ain't that a beep.